Hi and welcome to this QuickBooks training video from Tracy Bressler CPA. This is the fourth in our series of using inventory in QuickBooks. The last video talked about purchasing inventory which is a more involved process than selling. This one is about selling and so it will be a shorter simpler uh, training video just pointing out a couple of things about uh, selling inventory. Now the first thing I want to show you is creating a sales order which will uh, create an order for the items that we want to sell to a customer. And there are a couple of reasons for doing that but first I want to point out to you that if you have QuickBooks Pro you're not going to have this feature. Uh, this is a QuickBooks Premier feature and so you would have to have a Premier level of the product in order to do that. If you have Premier and you're still not seeing sales orders available to you you can go to Edit Preferences, Sales and Customers, Company Preferences, and you want to make sure that this checkbox right here is checked, Enable Sales Orders. And if you check that, then you should have the sales order icon on your home page. So if I click on Sales Orders, I get a form that looks a lot like an invoice. And let's pick uh, Christy Abercrombie for our customer. I'm going to accept the date, sales order number, and so forth, all that kind of information. Let's just skip right down here to the item column. And let's stick with using the brass hinge item that we've been using throughout this series of videos. So if I pick brass hinges and I say that uh, Christy wants 50 of those because she has a uh, hardware store or something, she's, she's purchasing those for, from us. And we're going to sell those to her for $5 each and it's not going to be a taxable uh, sale because she is reselling those. Then we have an, a sales order, I'm sorry, for $250. Now the reason for using a sales order form rather than going directly to the invoice might be that uh, perhaps we don't have 50 uh, in stock to send Christy. And so we will create a sales order and then we'll create an invoice and only send her 25 or something like that. And the sales order will keep track of the fact that we still owe Christy 25 uh, brass hinges. The other reason could be it could be a uh, special order item. We don't have any in stock. And so we use the sales order form then to keep track of the fact that we have that special order for Christy and we will turn that into an invoice as soon as the product comes in. Any reason that we might have to track an order that has not yet been fulfilled we could use a sales order form in order to do that. So Christie's sales order is complete. I click on save and close and that's done. Now the other important thing that I should mention to you is that a sales order is not a posting document in QuickBooks. It does not create any kind of an accounting uh, entry. It's informational only. The numbers have not changed in QuickBooks except that QuickBooks knows that we are committed to those 50 hinges for Christie and it will give us that information as we try to sell those hinges to other customers but it doesn't affect any dollars in the system. What does affect the dollars is the invoice. So if I click on create invoices and then I again choose Christie Abercrombie for the customer the uh, message that comes up from QuickBooks says that uh, this customer has an estimate or sales order what would we like to do? We want to create the invoice from the sales order, okay? Because we know we have that sales order out there, we just did that. So I will click OK. If there were multiple sales orders, they would be listed here. There's only the one, so I will choose that and click OK. And then I could create the sales order from, I'm sorry, I could create the invoice from only selected items on the sales order or I could create the invoice for all of the items that are on the sales order. And that's the option I'm going to leave. I will click OK. So if this were a partial shipment, I would have chosen the other option and said, you know what, I only want to send some of the things that are on the sales order, not all of them. In our case, we're going to do all of them. And QuickBooks fills in the information from the sales order, fills out the invoice for 50 of the items at $5 each. So we have a $250 invoice. And that's all that we need to do. That's fairly simple. It is important that you use correct items 
in QuickBooks. So it, I have to have one brass hinge item and I buy that brass hinge item and then I sell that brass hinge item. A common mistake I see people make is that they create too many items and they're not relating those to the specific item that uh, they're the tangible physical item that they're uh, buying does not always relate to just one QuickBooks item or they may not go through the purchase process because it's lengthier and uh, so they may not tell QuickBooks that they purchase 50 brass hinges they may only tell QuickBooks that they sell 50 in which case then QuickBooks gets confused and doesn't really know how many that you have on hand and not only does that confuse the numbers on hand but it confuses the dollars as well you'll end up going into negative inventory if you do that and you never want to go into negative inventory it causes uh, some difficulties in QuickBooks as far as trying to keep track of that average cost we sold those 50 hinges if we went back now and looked at our item we would see that there were 50 less um, brass hinges than there were before QuickBooks is keeping track of that for us and it is also in the background making the entry the accounting entry that says you know these brass hinges cost three dollars each so we're going to charge the three dollars each to cost a good sold and we're going to pull that three dollars each out of inventory so that on our balance sheet our inventory on hand or our inventory asset dollar number is going to reflect that change you don't have to make that change QuickBooks would do that for you just by virtue of the fact that you used an inventory item and you sold that on an invoice so um, I hope that's helpful for you. I hope that gives you a little bit of information about using inventory items in QuickBooks. We have a lot more QuickBooks training videos on our website at uh, tracycpa.com. I hope you'll uh, visit there and take a look at those. Thanks.